In this video traders, let's look at the difference between each flag and a trading range. Stay tuned. Hey guys, very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining me. All right, so the difference between a flag and a trading range can be quite subtle, but it really does influence the way that you might actually trade that setup. And actually now, when I'm filming this, I've got a lot of stocks that are doing this, but regardless of when you're watching this, you know, you can flip on his head, it could be the upside or downside. It's something that occurs quite a lot in the markets. And it's sometimes it's kind of, it's good to have a checklist if you like, so that you know, hey, you know what, I'm trading this as a flag or I'm trading this as a range. So. Uh, this sort of scenario here, you can imagine the price has moved lower, we've had a little pullback here, another drive lower, and now we've got this scenario. So a classical bear flag, if we kind of drew it textbook style, would be this, right? We've all seen the textbooks, there's our pole, it's just the opposite of a bull flag, which is this way around, there's our pole, and there's our flag. And the reason it's called a flag, obviously, is because of this. And the theory behind that is that you've had a drive in one direction, now price is pausing, and the likely scenario is that you get a continuation to the downside. Now, what's the difference between a flag and a range? When a flag tends to be shorter, i.e. that's not gonna continue a long period of time. Also, the movement up tends to be shallower. When you start pushing right back into the price, that ruins the flag. You know, the, the, the kind of most trade is done in the lower part of the pole, if you like, in a bear flag, or in the upper part of the pole in a bull flag. So what happens when we have something like this? How do we treat it? Well, this to me now has moved from a flag situation to more of a range of trade Trading range scenario. And some of the things that you can do to kind of get the idea of this is to look at how long this has been going on compared to how long the movement down has been. So if we look at, say, as much as a day, so you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days movement down, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days movement in the flag. But it's not now a flag because we're spending almost more time in this consolidation than we have in the trend. Now, it's not to say it's bullish. Uh, this is, I wouldn't say this is a bullish chart by any stretch of imagination, um, unless you've kind of got an uptrend here. A flag, however, you know, you're going to have less time spent in the flag scenario, and also you're going to, you know, have a little bit more volatility potential, a little bit more probes back and forth. So if this has stayed in for, let's say, three days, I mean, for example, this really is probably you know, a, a kind of flag. Because if you extrapolated that, I know it's only two here, but if you look at it from a perspective of how, um, if we just draw that there, how far, and I know I've drawn it from example from two here, but you can imagine there's probably been more trade done on its leg down. The, it, the dis difference is, guys, is that, you know, you've sat there and then it's happened again quite quickly after. The flag should be considered a more of a pause than a consolidation. Yes, it's a consolidation in terms of price is not really stretching up to highs or lows, but it's not an acceptance of price. It's a very brief pause. When you start getting into a trading range, that becomes a level that gets accepted. So some of the things you're looking for is how long it's staying in it, how big the move was beforehand. Also, if it's broken a key level as well, these kind of stuff uh, into its account. So how do you trade it? How do you trade them differently? Things with a flag is that you very often can kind of fade a counter trend move up. So let's say your bear flag, it pops up, then rolls over, you might be able to have a go on that on the short side for continuation preempt the kind of breakout strike. When you start trading in a range bound condition, i.e. it's stretching, you know, multiple days, it's stretching over a, a kind of maybe from one month to the next as well. So you haven't got a trigger, there's no catalyst, and sitting there, maybe volume's declining, uh, volatility is contracting on the options, this kind of stuff. And it's, and it's accepting this more than this type of thing, where it's more of a quick brief pause before a continuation, um, then you start to think, okay, I need to trade it differently. And yes, whilst you still need to respect the fact that the price has come down a long way, and you know, sellers are definitely in control up to here, you also have to respect the fact that there's no additional selling yet. Okay, so there's no buying or selling. So we've found an equilibrium of price that everyone's agreeing on, and that is between this trading range here. The flag's very different, it's a pause in price, and then automatically again, we get the supply demand imbalance. So when we've got this kind of stagnation here, 
the range is contracting, volumes uh, are contracting, volatility components of the options are contracting. How do we trade it? So one thing we can do, guys, is if we've got um, a thesis, and at the end of the day, let's, let's assume we had no thesis, right? This is a better way of looking at it. We've got no thesis and we want to trade this. Well, we'd either trade it like a normal range break and say, okay, well, if we break out the range, I'm going to take it. But being very careful, guys, I always prefer to wait for a pullback after a range break. I'm not a huge fan of trading the initial break because I've seen, uh, you know, over my years of trading, how many times it will break and it will just it will fake out and it will reverse on you. So I'm always very mindful of that. So I would rather see it break, rotate back maybe find some support and then start to go. Because the beauty of that is that you can then use that as a stop loss as opposed to trading the break here, getting here, and then where do you put your stop? Similarly to the downside. You know, my preference, by the way, for this is always going to be a downside break because I think, okay, if we're taking this bigger picture into consideration, that is not a bullish chart. Yes, some catalysts could come out and cause it to kind of drift back up. Of course it can. Uh, but the fact that it's accepting price in maybe the last two days of the drive lower really isn't that bullish. It means that there's, you know, buyers aren't really desperate to buy this at a huge discount, but then sellers aren't either. So you've got to kind of weigh up in both. But that to me is more of a bearish chart. So if I was looking for a break to the downside here, now I'm either going to wait for a break, a retracement, then it goes and I can put my stop there. Because don't forget guys, the key to trading or one of the keys, or one of the things that really helps get a better success from your individual trades is to wait for the time when you can express the trade with a sensible stop position. I think this is so overlooked with the trading is okay, you may have an idea, it may work out, but if you can't express that with a really good, logical, solid place to have a stop, it's almost meaningless because the risk order ratio just gets screwed. Um, you just can't manage it. You get end up being caught out by moves. You know, so for example, if you're trading the break lower, I know some people do that and that's fine. You know, each individual trades in their own way. If you're trading the break lower, you know, where do you put your stop? Do you kind of, do you put it in the midpoint here? Well, probably not because I haven't really tested that. Do you put it above the high there? Well, that's always too wide. Now your risk reward skewed. So I prefer to see when we're in this scenario where I'm not sure, unlike the flag where I quite happily sell into that low without a problem because I know that's more likely to momentum, it's just a small pause. And if it pops back up straight away, I'll cut it and I'll use it like that. Whereas if I've been in a trade, I'm not gonna be starting to drive shorts into lows. I'm gonna wait and see what the response is. Now, if it runs low and low and low and I've missed it, there'll be a pullback to get into that I could probably manage from that. There might even be an additional flag that comes up after the consolidation. However, more than likely, guys, because you've been in this range, unless it's a catalyst, of course, which changes the game completely, because you've been in the range such a long time, you might get the shift of supply demand that pushes lower, then it might try to come back, and then it rolls. And the beauty of that, as I just said before, is that you've got a level then to work off your short. You can say, hey, it's broken, which has given me the first reason to take the short. I've seen the sellers are now back in control. It's pulled back up and failed to push back up into the range, number two. Number three, now it's rolling back over. So I've got my three kind of ducks in a row. And additionally, number four, I've now got a level to work my short off. I've seen the kind of whites of the eyes of the seller. sellers. I've seen it drive lower. I've seen it retrace. I've seen it roll over. Now I can have a go. Now I've got a decent place for my short, which means I can size up a lot better. It means I have a better risk reward ratio. And having this little bit of patience, guys, with, with some of these type of trades that are a bit 50-50, you don't know which way it's going to break, you know, is much, much better than trying to think, okay, well, it's a bearish chart. I should go short here because you, you know, you don't know how far it's going to break. If it's going to break against you, how far it will go. Will it fake out to the upside first and roll over? You just don't know how it's going to behave. And it's very difficult to frame a trade and the stop ends up being wide and that messes up your risk reward ratio. And if you're doing that consistently with a poor risk reward ratio, no matter how good the trade is, you know, it's never going to work for you longer term. So something to think about guys, Flag versus trading range, flags, tight, quick, tends to be after a big momentum thing, short and shallow uh, in the lower end of the range as well, not looking for a longer period of time, volatility not necessarily having time to contract too much, volume not having time to contract too much. Um, it's a short little bit of a pause. Range is when it kind of gets accepted, kind of ping-ponging back and forth, there's never really any volume, never volatility, everything's quieting down. So you trade them a little bit differently. Anyway guys, flags versus trading range, keep the risk manager, whatever you're doing, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.